All right, our top story is this, the unboxing and review of the Realme 2 Pro. Like I said, this company has come into India and it's come with a single purpose to decimate the competition, to really, really take brands out and take them for a whipping. And with their third phone launch, they've actually done it. Very interesting launch, very aggressive phone, very high-end phone, very low-end prices. So we'll unbox it right now and then go into the review. Let's get started. This, of course, is a prototype box that has been sent. This is not the final box, so don't take a look at the box. But it's, again, typical Realme style in terms of the way it looks. Oh. Okay, so once again, when we start off, the first thing that you really see is, of course, the documentation and the fact that it has the silicon cover. Now, before I get the phone open, I'm going to take you through like I always do so that there are no sticker shocks when you see the phone. The first thing that you'll see in this phone, of course, is the fact that it's got a no-not screen. So it's a, called a water drop. It's that small, tiny little hole. And that is where the, actually the entire electronics is built. And then full HD screen, great optics, absolutely fantastic specs from the processor to the RAM to the storage, and absolutely beautiful design. So now that I've set it up, let's take a look. So as you can see, and I'm going to take this one off also. So once again, Realme absolutely shocks with the looks of the phone. Now this is beautifully put together. If you see the way the sides have been put together, the screen in the front, and I'm going to power it up and show you. So if you see, you, you'll see that little water drop. You may not be seeing it right now. And this is, of course, the blue one that they've sent us. So if you see how they've built this phone with the glass at the back, with the way that the color is actually picking up the light, the fingerprint scanner, the dual camera, the flash out here, the buttons very well put together, feel solid in the hand. And then, of course, like I said, it's got a 3.5 mm headphone jack. And then now you can see it right on the top. And that's all it has. The rest of the screen, absolutely as clear as it really can be. Once you start using a phone with this water drop design, and we've done it before, you never realize that there is a notch. It almost feels like it is a border to border phone. Here's our full review. Amongst the fun frolic and the large crowds, one phone stole the show. This is the Realme 2 Pro that was launched amongst many students and a whole lot of cheering. This phone promises to be quite a head turner with its big ticket specifications and a starting price of 13,990 rupees. Well, soon after the Realme 2 comes the Pro Edition. But just how Pro can Realme go? Well, let's take a deep look at the phone. The design of the Realme 2 Pro sure is a head turner. It has a beautiful sheen at the back which resembles a dewdrop. We got the blue variant for review and even the side panels of the phone were this brilliant blue which is a nice touch. Although we did find the phone to be a fingerprint magnet. Of course, the industry trend of the notch continues with this Pro Edition, but this is no regular notch. It's a water drop notch right in the center of the phone, which the company terms the dew drop screen. The screen is large enough to enjoy videos at 6.3 inches. It has a full HD Plus display, which gives good clarity. Now, most of the big ticket specifications lie inside the phone. The top end model of the phone has a whopping 8 GB RAM. We opened various apps and even played a few games and the phone worked very well. This is of course complemented with the Snapdragon 660 chipset it packs in. The processor supports AI and the phone has an AI engine which is mainly seen in the workings of the optics and the battery of this phone. The battery is 3500 mAh which lasted just one day of heavy usage but there are AI battery saving options which can conserve battery consumption when the phone is resting. Coming to what makes phones the most lucrative these days, the camera. The Realme 2 Pro has a 16 megapixel lens all around it. The back camera is a pair of 16 megapixel lenses and even the front has a 16 megapixel lens. The camera has AI scene recognition which really enhances images even in low light. The front camera has AI beautification and performed exceptionally well in low lit selfies. So the camera is a big win here. The phone runs on Android Oreo and is topped with Color OS 5.2. It runs pretty smoothly, although we did wish this was an Android One phone. There are three RAM and storage variants along with a difference in price in this phone. The 4GB RAM 64GB storage variant is priced at 13,990 rupees, while the 6GB RAM and 64GB storage is priced at 15,990 rupees. The top end variant has a huge 8GB RAM and 128GB of storage, 
and is priced at 17,990 rupees. I think my entire product is a star. In fact, six, you take 660 processor, you take designs, you take camera, everything is a star at this point. See, as of now, I don't see any competition of this particular phone in any of this price segment. Because in this price segment, I don't see any 660 or this camera features or this design. As of now, I don't see any competition in this price segment with Realme 2 Pro. Let's see in the near future if any brand comes. Let's see about it. The Selguru verdict? The Realme 2 Pro is out and out a power-driven phone. With AI features, a powerful processor and a big battery, it comes across as an all-rounder and delivers on that front as well. If you're looking at a sub-20,000 rupee phone, then the Realme 2 Pro shines bright and Pro is definitely the way to go in this segment. The rebirth of Nokia, that's our second story. And I think out of all the phones they've released, they've done interesting things since they've come back, the HMD Nokia part of it. But ever since they've come back, their momentum has been good, but not absolutely fantastic. But this could be the phone that changes it all. Now, Nokia, the new Nokia, has taken the legacy of the previous Nokia. They make solid phones. It's a great brand. It's a great legacy to play with because literally everything is very high quality. This is the no compromise phone in every which way in terms of the way it's built the design but now Nokia gets aggressive with I think the last part of the puzzle and that is higher specs a more aggressive lower price and this could be the start of that the Nokia 5.1 plus here's our Selguru review after the success of Nokia 6.1 plus HMD Global is hitting the ball out of the park with yet another phone in the series this is the Nokia 5.1 Plus and Plus is right as it comes with a lot of plus features like a big screen and a big battery that makes it a hit. But at 10,999 rupees, is it a hit or a miss on being a value for money phone? Let's find out. On the design front, the Nokia 5.1 Plus is a show stealer. It is a very slim and light phone and has round edges and a sleek finish. The back has high gloss finish and we got the black variant for review which looked quite premium. Nokia jumped onto the notch bandwagon with the 6.1 Plus and even this phone sports a notch. The notch does not interfere while watching videos, though as they get letterboxed. Coming to the display, when switched on, Nokia gives us a familiar and nostalgic tone before you see the brilliant display. The phone has an HD Plus display with sharp and very bright colours. Contrary to its name, it's not a plus size phone and the size of the display is 5.8 inches and it feels comfortable to hold and use even with one hand. The big plus with this phone is that it runs pure Android. Yes, this phone is an absolute breeze with Android 1 based on Android Oreo. The UI is neat and clutter-free and the phone will remain up-to-date over time. Hmm, Nokia claims this phone is ready for the next Android update too. And we can't wait for the pie. Well, the processor on this phone adds to the smooth experience. It has a MediaTek Helio P60 processor which lends its speed and power to handle gaming and other apps. We played a game for quite a long time on this phone and it ran well without heating. We also opened and used several apps and it did so without any lag. Looking further under the hood, there is 3GB RAM and 32GB storage which can be expanded and the storage seems sufficient for day-to-day -day use. There is also a fingerprint scanner at the back to open the phone which works smoothly. Coming to the optics on the Nokia 5.1 Plus, it has a vertically stacked dual camera setup at the back with a 13 megapixel and 5 megapixel lens. There is live bokeh mode which gives images great depth and even various color filters that add richness to images that are clicked. The bokeh was quite accurate and we liked the result of the pictures. The front shooter is 8 megapixel and does well in good light. There are a whole host of stickers for a splash of fun on this phone. Known to be reliable and long-lasting, Nokia does not disappoint with the 5.1 Plus as well. It has a huge 3060 mAh battery which lasted us one day of normal use. There is no fast charge feature though on this phone. The cell grew verdict. With Nokia 5.1 Plus, consumers now have a solid phone at 10,999 rupees. Nokia is levelling the playing field in this price segment and now with the 5.1 Plus, there is an option against the likes of Xiaomi and Honor. Do consider it as this phone is definitely reliable. Well, it's birthday time. No, not mine. My 30th birthday, of course, is in December. But that's something you all will know all about. It's actually somebody's 10th birthday. And that is... Android, yes, the one operating system that has literally taken the smartphone market, churned it, turned it, twisted it, and made it what it is. 
it turns 10. So we did this to celebrate 10 years of Android. We came up with the 10 things that Android has done to change your life. It's a hap hap happy birthday and our green bot has now turned 10. From the dream to the pixel, from 1.0 to 9.0. The little green man has given us a buffet of desserts along with the sweet taste of Android. So here are some of our eternal favourite features that give us quite a sugar rush. With voice-based features, Android gave their users an almost walkie-talkie type of a companion at all times. With voice actions, you can search on Google, set an alarm or send a text. Voice search was available from the initial release of the app and some of the other features were gradually added with updates. The best part about using an Android phone is all the Google services that come with it. The apps, the browser, the photos, all of which is easy to use, sync and transfer between devices. The multi-core processors, the precious RAM of your phones, the mammoth battery and the latest updates. With all that power loaded on your phone, you have to ensure that you get productivity to the max. Enter Android's multitasking feature. It offers unique and smooth handling of memory allocation. You can keep two windows opened together and work on them simultaneously. Not many find this useful, but which other platform will let you read your email while browsing through photographs? This is probably one of the most popular features. We are sure each of you is guilty of trying to act sneaky by taking a screenshot of a chat and sending it to your gang of friends. Android brought in this famous feature by pressing the power and the volume button together. For people with poor or no vision, TalkBack is available on the Android platform that provides built-in text-to-speech. There are also enhancements for people with hearing difficulties making the platform very inclusive. If you're still silencing your phone manually, it's just too old school. Just head to the sound tab in the settings menu and tap on the do not disturb icon and you're done. The big, big advantage that Android users have over iOS fans is that we can get oodles and oodles of memory with microSD cards. And did we mention that for connectivity, you get Bluetooth, GSM, CDMA, NFC, LTE and a whole lot more. With the latest update, you can monitor your app and social media usage. With the digital well-being feature, users will be able to track time spent on apps and set alerts as well. This aims to make people more conscious of their online usage. Artificial intelligence is the next big thing and Android has embedded it well in the OS. With the new app actions, your phone will be able to predict what you're about to write or what action you're about to perform. Creepy? No. Useful? Absolutely. So we'll take a very quick break on the Cell Guru Show because I've got lots and lots of stuff to show you. You know what's the most barbaric area, I think, in the world of technology? The one that has the most competition, the one that takes no prisoners? I think it's the app area because literally, according to me, Every app category, maybe there are still app ideas that are left, but every app category has already been done. So when you hear about a new fitness app, the big question is, what does this do that the others can't? I mean, is there anything in fitness that has been left out from the app world? Well, Fitter is the new app. It thinks it has something new. We try and find out. You are what you eat. If you want to be healthy, you must eat healthy and in proportion. And while there are many apps out in the stores to help you keep track, one app is slowly standing out and that's Fitter. Made by Squats, a fitness company in Pune, this app keeps a track of what you eat and it helps you achieve your fitness goals. Once we downloaded the app for free on either iOS or Android, we realized it's pretty simple to get used to. Just enter your body weight and height, the goal and your chosen diet. You will then get an automated nutrition chart and can also track everyday nutrition intake. There is also an option to enroll a coach on the app who can then guide us through the process. After all, who doesn't need some extra motivation? The Fitter app also has a social page where we can ask our queries, share transformations, recipes and workouts. We found the app to be simple. It recognizes most of Indian food and we like the fuss-free nature of it. There's an option to calculate your BMR as well. Hmm, 
So if you're looking forward to getting fit by not dieting but by being a smart eater, then Fitter is a good app to go to. Well, that then is the show for the week. But do remember, lots of very interesting devices around the mobile domain will be reviewed next week, including this, the Motorola One Power. See you next week.